In this video, we're going to do a walkthrough of the specific API calls that you need to make when implementing subscription payments. As we step through these calls, we're going to use the example of a meal kit delivery service that delivers a set of meals to its customers on a weekly basis. First, we need to create our subscription plan and subscription plan variation. We can create both of these at the same time with one call to the upsert catalog object endpoint in the catalog API. For the subscription plan, we can give it a reference ID like two meals a week and a type of subscription plan. Now, if we scroll down to subscription plan data, we can give our plan a name and indicate what we're selling by providing category IDs from our catalog. These are just two that I already have, but feel free to fit this to your catalog items. If we keep working our way down, we can add data for our subscription plan variation. This is the way in which we're selling our meals. Again, I'll give this an ID and then a type of subscription plan variation. Now let's move on down and add some data. For the name, we'll use two meals a week promo, and then we get to the phases. Let's make the first phase a free trial phase for one week by setting the price type to static with a price money of $0. The second phase will run on a monthly cadence and will set the pricing to relative so the price can be decided by the meals the customer chooses. Okay, I know that was a lot, but with just that one API call, we now have all the setup in place. The next few calls we make will all be driven by user actions. For instance, let's say a user comes to our site to subscribe to the chicken sandwich and steak tacos meal kit. To implement this, we'll use the create order endpoint on the orders API to make an order template for these items. We'll need to provide the location ID, the customer ID, and the two catalog object IDs that represent the meal kit items. Most importantly, we need to make sure the state is set to draft. This ensures that we're creating an order template and not an actual order. Let's run the request and hold on to the order ID we get back. Once we have that order template created, we can subscribe the user with the create subscription endpoint of the subscriptions API. Here we'll pass the subscription plan variation ID from before and the customer ID and location ID. Then in the phases field, we can include the order template ID from the order template we just created. With that, our user is subscribed. In an ideal world, you can sit back and let your subscription run for eternity. In a more realistic world, however, your users are going to want to be able to manage their subscriptions. For example, what if a customer needs to pause their subscription? Well, you can do that with the pause subscription endpoint. All you have to do is supply the subscription ID and any other relevant details. Running this request will create what we call an action. An action is just a scheduled change to the subscription. So in this case, the pause will take effect at the end of the billing cycle. Finally, after a customer pauses their subscription, they might want to be able to check and see the status of their subscription. For this, you can make a call to the search subscriptions endpoint and query by customer ID, making sure to also set the include field to actions. And you'll see that pause action is included with an effective date. There you have it. These are some of the most commonly used API calls when it comes to creating and managing subscriptions. Of course, there's always more you can do with these APIs to fit any of your business needs. So go on and give it a try, see what you can build.